I should be asking questions like this. What am I doing in my marriage that acts as if that's the result of treating my marriage like it belongs to me and not to my Lord? What am I doing with my body that acts like that body belongs to me and not to my Lord. Yeah, you mentioned even How do earlier I do? sexuality. Is sexuality, our sexuality belongs to God. Talk about that for a second. Well, of course, uh, the ultimate pleasure that should motivate me in my sexuality is the pleasure of God. Because this thing belongs to Him. That somehow, some way, the way I, connect, I, I conduct myself in that area of life would bring him him pleasure. Right. That's not impractical. That's very practical. I, listen, if I'm a man and I treat sex as for my pleasure, I will reduce my wife to an object. In fact, I'm going to use the word. She will become sadly, a little more than a means of me masturbating myself because she just an object for my pleasure. If that's true, it won't be long before I'm tempted to replace her with digital pornography because it's never been about loving her. It's never been about loving God. It's been about loving myself. And frankly, it's just easier to satisfy self-love with something that doesn't require anything of me. Right. Uh, I think that addiction in the church is an indictment of the way we're owning sexuality in our marriages because we're making it about us. It's about our pleasure. We're comfortable with being demanding. We're comfortable of using our wife for our pleasure, whether it's pleasurable for her at all, and rolling over and going to sleep as if she doesn't matter. Uh, and, and so the doctrine of creation speaks into sexuality. Mm -hmm. Of course it does. What about my money? Uh, what is my dream for money? When I dream of having more money, what do I dream of doing with more money? Uh, what occupies my money fantasies? Uh, why is it that I'm in a situation where income always chases expenditures? Why am I always in debt? What, and, and how would the fact that every bit of financial resources I have belongs to the Lord for his purpose and for his using. A good example of that, Shelby, is in uh, Ephesians 4, when Paul really begins to apply the truths of the gospel to living. He applies it to money. And he says, let him that stole steal no, steal no longer, but work with his hands. Now, I would expect that what it would say next is so he has the wherewithal to provide for himself. That's not what it says. It says, so he is able to give to those in need. Wow. The purpose of my money, the very first purpose of my money, is that I can be a part of God's generosity mission on earth. Because the whole story of Scripture is a generosity story. Uh, captured by nine words in John 3, for God so loved the world that he gave. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's beautiful. Uh, so, so it's not first for me where I say, okay, the first uh, goal of a Christian view of money is provision for you and your family, and then you give a tithe to the Lord. That's not what the Bible teaches. Because we all know, we've all been in situations where we haven't had money, and God's provided for us. Yeah. And unexpected, God's a phenomenal provider. He provides for his own. The number one reason for my money 
is so that I could somehow, some way, be a tool of the generosity of the one who sits on the throne of the universe. Now, if you if you track that in scripture, the law said it was the first fruits of your harvest that you offered to the Lord. It's the same, it's the same teaching as is there in Ephesians 4. So again, the doctrine of creation transforms the way you think about money. Yeah. Blessed and, to be a and blessing. You could just you could you could just again track through everything in your life that 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 two pronged implication of ownership and purpose that is inextricably attached to the doctrine of creation begins to radically transform the way you approach your living.